Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and I'm ready to do my full review on this knife. This is the Microtech, Microtech Dirac Delta. Dirac, Dirac, I still don't know. I'm going with Dirac. Um, this knife was loaned to me by my buddy Ryan, who will be linked down below. You can check him out on Instagram. Ryan's a really cool dude, and I appreciate it anytime that he sends me loaners. Um, we actually have a phone call scheduled for tonight, um, so I'll be talking to Ryan again this evening. But, uh, yeah, so... Ryan loaned me this knife, and I've had it for a couple of weeks in my possession now. I've carried it a couple of times, played with it quite a bit, and I feel like I'm ready to kind of come to a conclusion on it. So, the big differentiating factor between this Microtech OTF and the others that I've experienced is that the switch is on this face instead of kind of on the side here. So normally, um, you actuate it right here. On this one, kind of hold it flat. And then it, I, I have found, <laughs> I wasn't sure how I was going to like it. I prefer it slightly the other way. I like it a little bit better right here where I can just kind of leave my hand right where it is and also use it as kind of a thumb ramp. I like that extra little bit of kind of a guard that the button gives you on like the Ultra Tech or the Combat Troodon. But this isn't a deal breaker. Um, I think for some reason it looks a little bit nicer right here like in photos but I do prefer the button here personally on the side not on the face if any of that makes sense now in my first impressions video of this knife I went on to a little bit of a tirade <laughs> I talked about the glass breaker a whole lot let me reiterate I think this glass breaker is stupid I think just about every single glass breaker that's ever been put on any knife anytime any place for any reason is stupid and should not be there, doesn't belong. I just don't think glass breakers belong on knives. I think if you need a glass breaker in your vehicle or in your line of work or something, you should have a separate designated glass breaker tool. I think that would make more sense to me than putting it on the butt end of your knife. I just don't, don't like it. I don't know if it's supposed to be tactical. That's not a tactical feature to me. It's a bummer. I, if this was my knife, I would replace it. Um, and any Microtech that I get moving forward, now that I've done a little research and found that there are replacement, just like button head screws you can put back there, I will be replacing them if they have a glass breaker on them because they're stupid. <laughs> so if you want to watch a more in-depth version of me saying all of that, you can watch my first impressions video, but glass breaker, stupid. Um, other than that, this knife it's a Microtech. So for me to try to judge it as an EDC knife doesn't seem super fair to me at this point. Like, it's not a good EDC knife. I don't think a double-edged, like, dagger grind uh, OTF is going to be a viable, good EDC option that I will recommend to somebody who actually plans on using their knife for regular cutting tasks. This blade is designed to pierce other human beings. That's what it's for. It has edges on it, so it can cut things, it cuts things okay, but it doesn't really cut things well. It's just not supposed to. The edges that are on it are sharp, but it's going to be thick behind the edge, it's going to be kind of an obtuse profile, just because of the nature of it. And so be it, that's fine. I still like OTFs, I still like having them around, I like playing with them, um, I get a kick out of them, but they're not good EDC knives, in my opinion. I haven't met one yet that I have found like, oh, this really makes sense as an EDC. I get that some people like to use them as EDC knives because they're so fun and because they make them happy enough because they do this, but they're just, there are so many vastly better EDC knives. The knife that I'm carrying today on this hike is my Spyderco Gale Bradley 2, which is super sweaty right now. I should probably wipe that down since it's M4. Um, this is a great EDC knife. If you look at blade lengths, we're not far off from each other. They're about the same, actually. But the Gale Bradley 2 is ground in such a way that I can use this to cut all kinds of things with ease. It does very well at all of my EDC-type cutting tasks. And it's robust enough that, as evidenced by me having it in my pocket on this crazy hike that I did today, um, I trust it outdoors and stuff. It's a, it's a good, solid knife. This I would never trust. <laughs> For... The types of things that I like if I'm carrying this as my primary I better make sure that my secondary is a very capable knife that day because any real cutting task I come up on this isn't what I want to whip out and cut with it cut with cut it with <laughs> anyways 
there's that as well. Um, another thing about this particular one, and a lot of people mentioned this after the first impressions video in the comments, it has a twang. I don't think it should have that twang. <laughs> um, I don't know if something just needs to be tightened down or if it needs to be lubed internally or what's happening with that. Um, I know that it's a real Microtech. This isn't a clone or anything. This is a legit Microtech Direct Delta. Um, but it does have that twang. And that kind of bothers me a little bit as well. In, uh, I think it was the Combat Troodon I had. It had a little bit of a twang as well, but not like this. And I found that if I was really bearing down on it, and deployed it, I didn't hear it as much. It was more like if I was kind of limp wristing it that I would hear it, but this one, even if I really bear down on it, those springs are just twanging inside. So not the greatest there either. I would assume if this knife was sent into Microtech or something that they could address that, but it's there. So I guess I'll talk about kind of my normal review type of stuff with all of that already having been said. So keep in mind, I don't see this as a viable EDC knife option in terms of the EDC tasks that I do. I could see it as a viable defense blade act, uh, offering, maybe. If, if you're looking for a knife purely for self-defense, then I could see its merits there. Um, but let's talk about ergos, cutting, carry, and uh, action. So action, it's an OTF. Other than the spring sound, this one is great. It's really, really good. I haven't had a misfire other than the one that happened on camera when I was doing the first impressions, and I think that's because I like did something weird with my wrist while I was deploying it. Um, but yeah, the spring sound is not good. Everything else, it's snappy. It's what a Microtech OTF should be expected to be. Carry is really good other than the glass breaker. Again, see my previous comments if you want to hear a tirade about that. But if without the glass breaker, this would be an awesome clip setup. It would carry nice and deep. It would be an appropriate profile in the pocket. I like that it's just this smooth aluminum, so everything feels nice and rounded and smooth, and it's easy in and out of pocket. So much is great about carrying it, but you have this stupid thing that sticks up above your pocket, and it's just, it's my least favorite part of the knife, so why do I want it sticking out of my pocket where everyone can see it and think that I'm a nerd who carries a glass breaker? <laughs> Anyway, um, carry is, is good other than the glass breaker. Um, ergos, I don't find that many OTF ergos are really like great for me in the sense that they're locked in, but it's real neutral. It's got this jimping um, here, 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 and that jimping does, I, I think I find it necessary on here, especially because this is designed for like stabbing, thrusting. Without that, I'd feel real worried that I'd slip forward on it. Um, I wish I could wrap my thumb around the top here. That's important to me on a reverse grip. And with a dagger blade, I think that would be perfect. But again, glass breaker ruins that. So the ergos on this are just like, it's a nice neutral profile, but I think even for what it's like designed to do, I would like a little bit, maybe more of a guard, just like a little bit of a swell up here or something, um, so that I was less worried about slipping forward, and of course I'd like that to be gone, so I could wrap my thumb around the top, because that's the way I want to do a reverse grip, in case I hit something harder than I'm expecting to, so that I don't slip forward onto it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not uncomfortable, it's not the worst, it's just... I don't find it that effective, <laughs> even if I was perceiving to be doing like a, something self-defense related with this knife. I, I'm not as confident in these ergos as I am in most of my other folding knives in terms of how locked in I feel on the knife. I just don't get that locked in sensation here. Um, we talked action, carry, ergos, cutting. <laughs> cutting is going to be, uh, like I mentioned in the beginning, it's thick behind the edge quite thick. Um, it has a very stabby tip, so if what you're looking to do cutting-wise is stab things, then sure, that's what this is designed to do. But in terms of like slicing through cardboard and cutting zip ties and stuff, this just isn't the blade shape for it, and uh, it's not really the designed intention, I don't think. So cutting, for me, it's going to kind of fail, because all the things I actually do with my knives a lot, it's not very good at, but it's not trying to be. So this review might seem a little unfair, <laughs> um, and if you look back on some of my other 
Microtech reviews. Like I had the um, Bounty Hunter Ultratech with the Hellhound blade. I loved that knife because it was like embracing the gimmickiness of an OTF. It was a freaking Star Wars Boba Fett themed crazy Tanto blade. Like it was like a sci-fi knife, right? And it was fun in that way where I don't really dig OTFs so much so far with any of the ones that I've tried is they're just not that useful for me. And so I find myself more drawn to the ones that are like embracing their craziness. Um, I do want to try a cipher soon. I intend to do that. Um, hopefully sooner rather than later. When I see one pop up, that's exactly what I want and the timing is right, then it's going to happen. But uh, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the Dirac Delta. I don't hate it. I get why people like it. If you're into OTFs, like as a whole, I think this is a nice one. Spring twang aside, um, I'm assuming not all of them do that quite so much. Um, it's, it's pretty good. And the finish on this one is cool. I like the kind of distressed look on this OD green. Um, the blade finish is nice. The pocket clip is nice. Like there's a lot that is, that can be appreciated here for sure, but it's just, this isn't an OTF for me. It's trying a little too hard to be serious about being an OTF, I think, and makes too many mistakes for what I look for in a knife. But not everyone looks for what I look for in a knife, so <laughs> take all that for what it's worth. Anyway, uh, Ryan will be linked down below, again, like I mentioned in the beginning, and uh, I appreciate it, buddy. Thank you for loaning this to me. Thank you all of you for watching. I appreciate it so much. Thanks for all the comments. The, um, those of you who've subscribed, those of you who follow me on Instagram, I see you. I appreciate you. You guys are awesome. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.